Welcome to Moraine Estate Winery. I'm uh, Ola Karistarkov, proprietor of uh, winery, and I have uh, Jacqueline Kemp, our beautiful winemaker here. So we would like to introduce you uh, our 2012 vintage wines. So we are very happy what, uh, with the wines what we have, and we'd like to share our success with you. First of all, we, we've brought the wines into the vineyard because for me this is where it all begins. It begins in the vineyard on, on site. These wines here are estate grown and estate made just behind you. Uh, at the moment we're sitting in a beautiful area of the Naramata bench and we're sitting actually on top of what's called moraine soils. Moraine soils is where the name comes from and the soils are based pretty much from glacial formation and it's a mixture of, of silt and soil and rock. So we're just sitting on the moment at the moment on these beautiful soils which, which created these wines. So we've got a few wines to go through today and we're going to start with our beautiful rosé uh, which is just made grown in this section of the vineyard here. It's predominantly Merlot with a little bit of Malbec. So with the rosé it's a little bit different to um, a majority of, of rosés grown within the region. We actually make this rosé for a rosé so all the grapes come in, they ferment together and then we actually press them off just to just to take some of the colour off and this is our rosé here. So when looking at the wine, especially at the moment, we're getting a lot of rhubarb and cotton candy. And what are you picking up, Oleg? Some strawberry. Some strawberries oh, as well? Rose, yeah. Now with the texture, it's a little bit fuller in the mouth, it is just slightly off dry. So it's a great wine to pair with food. Any sort of just relaxing on a deck, uh, eating maybe blue cheeses and figs um, with some really good crackers. And this wine just sits really nicely with that. So the next wine we would like to introduce is uh, Gewürztraminer. And it's my favorite wine uh, which is go ahead with uh, Asian food or spicy food. This is new for us here at Moraine in the 2012 vintage. Uh, there's a little bit of skin contact, so what that means is we bring the grapes in from the vineyard, they stay with their skins for a little bit just to pick up a little bit of the pink colour. And then what we're looking for here is, is pretty much a nice dry style Gewürz, which is a little bit different again for the region. Uh, and we really want to show the aromatics of this wine. So what we're picking up here is, oh, I'm getting a ton of lychee and sort of pears and a little bit of citrus and it finishes really really dry. How are you finding this wine? Olivia? I think it's very fragrant. It's, uh, it's a lot of rose mm. rose uh, aromas here and it uh, finishes uh, uh, kind of s with spicy bite with what I actually like here. The other wines we have to try today, this is the 2012 Pinot Gris which is grown on the site here, actually just, just not too far away from where we're standing here. The good thing about this Pinot Gris is it's actually been picked in two pickings. There's an early picking to preserve the aromatics of this wine, and then later we brought in another section of the fruit just to build the body and texture of the wine. Mm. So the aromatics definitely that are coming off at the moment are melon and peach and really juicy ripe summer fruits. If you just have a little look further down you actually can pick up the citrus tone as well. And it's very crisp and refreshing mm. at the same time. There's a hint of residual sugar on this wine just to balance the natural acidity and it makes this wine go really really well. Just some light foods again just lazing around on a summer day with maybe some um, some meats and maybe a little bit of cheese, but cheeses that aren't too strong, so more like Edams and cheddars rather than the big blue cheeses. So the thing that I really like about this Pinot Gris uh, is that it's really light and fruity and fresh. Um, we're trying to maintain this wine or get this wine so that you can really, really see what, what the soil is about as well as the fruit. So quite a gentle, delicate wine that's actually seeing no oak at all, so it's really good with food. So the next wine we have to pour today is our 2012 Viognier. Again, it was grown in this site here. Uh, and the interesting thing about this wine here is that uh, for myself personally, I thought it was going to be a real struggle to grow this, this uh, grape on the site. 
uh, but with the site here we get this beautiful uh, window at the end, a two week window where we can just edge to the end of this uh, varietal and we can get the real aromatics that we're look, looking for. Viognier is our, uh, one of our signature wines here and it's uh, very popular among the people who come here, uh, sit in our picnic area and enjoy the wine. Again, this wine here was 100% stainless steel fermented, so you're not getting the heavy weight of oak on this wine. It's very light and crisp. Mm. Picking up some real mandarin flavours coming in. And again, very, very citrus. With this wine, with a little bit of age, you actually start seeing a bit of the soil too, so I'm not sure if you've ever tasted um, eating chalk when you're a child or, or just nibbling on some, some, some rocks. But this is what it will come through. Real flinty flavours uh, will be coming through on this wine, probably in another two to three months time. I found a lot of tropical aromas on the nose. Definitely tropical too. And this one, uh, stone fruits. Stone fruits? Yeah. This wine pairs really well with um, seafood, especially with things like oysters and shellfish. Um, and probably some salmon as well, but, but just salmon that hasn't been smoked. So anything that's been on the barbecue and some really good shellfish will do really well with this wine. Okay, so I'm just going to change places here with Oleg to introduce the next wine for you, because this is something that's really personal to him. So this uh, wine uh, is a Chardonnay 2012, and uh, I really like Chardonnay slightly oaked, uh, uh, and uh, to have it with... Uh, smoked oysters, uh, other kind of seafood. And we made a very limited uh, amount of uh, high quality Chardonnay. So this is my favorite wine. With the Chardonnay here, this was grown on another site that's just slightly further down from here. Again, as we said, it's a very small quantity. Uh, the berries came in, they sat together on their skins for a little bit, and then we actually put these into the press in, in whole bunches and then really, really gently, gently handled this fruit. Um, it's a very special wine to us. And it's just been released now. It's got beautiful, beautiful creaminess to it. Again, peaches and citrus, which is pretty common from this area. And with a little bit of age, you actually start to see the texture of the wine a bit more. It will come together a little bit more. So this wine's completely dry. It has a hint of oak. And the oak's really being used here just to build the weight of the, the wine rather than to overpower the wine. So again, like Ole said, he really likes a Chardonnay which you can just sit down and enjoy with some beautiful seafoods. And this is what our 2012 Chardonnay is all about. And it uh, reflects uh, our vineyard, what we call Sophia, which is uh, my uh, daughter name. So, what you can say about soils there or anything. Okay. Well, with, again, it's got a real flintiness to it, to the wine. And it's actually showing a bit, little bit of silkiness at this stage as well. It's a little young to be showing too much of the soil, but again, give it a couple of years and you'll really start to see what the site's really about. It's very popular, again, in, in, among the buyers in the tasting room here. And uh, we're extremely happy with this wine. The next wine I'd like to introduce is a Bordeaux blend. We call it Red Mountain. So as you know, there is a Red Mountain uh, ski resort in uh, British Columbia. And uh, we would like to, in our branding and the naming, we would like to reflect uh, the local geography spots, uh, like national parks, ski resorts. So we'd like to be close to the British Columbia and uh, celebrate the place here. So Red Mountain is a blend of uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Malbec. Let's uh, taste it. Yeah, that sounds great. So the 2011 Red Mountain is a blend of fruit, uh, and it comes together really nicely with different little sections of, of the site here. Again, we're getting tons of plums and big red fruits, dark, dark blackberries when they're just about ready to be picked for like blackberry pie. Uh, lots of, of also cinnamon and spices coming through as well. So this wine here will age easily for the next 7 to 10 years and will go really, really well with anything that's really heavy as far as food. So we're looking at more like steaks and 
and anything that is stewy and gamey meats as well, really good with things like rabbit and wild venison. So the next wine uh, we will uh, introduce is uh, Cliffhanger Red. And it's a very popular brand uh, right now uh, in BC and in Alberta. So this wine is uh, very young, fresh, easy to drink. And we found that the younger generation or um, of the wine drinkers, they just love this wine. It's about having some fun with the grapes uh, again from the site. So with wine, I want it to also be approachable as well as you know being serious as well. But this wine here is really to show the 2012 vintage. So you can kind of get a feel for what the wines are going to be like when they come out a little bit later in autumn. And these are the wines, the Pinot Noir and, and some of the other fruits that we've got out. This is a real fun wine. Uh, it's got a hint of oak to it. And I'll just get Oleg to pour it for us so we can taste it. But really it's about having fun. And um, that's probably why it hits, hits my generation and the younger generation so well. The color here is really dark purple and vibrant. And this darkness or the depth of color is coming from our Malbec fruit, which is just slightly off here um, in this direction. And that gives it the real dark color and also the real fruit front uh, freshness to this wine. Uh, this is a combination of Merlot and Malbec. And it's picked a little bit earlier than normal, so we're getting things like raspberries and blackberries and cassis or black currants. Um, and the texture of this wine here is really soft and silky. So we made this wine so it's really young and approachable without having the real hard tannins um, that are normally associated with a young wine. How are you finding the wine or the mouthfeel of this, this Oleg? I also feel um, uh, mocha and chocolate. Definitely also. chocolate. And uh, a little bit of tobacco at the end. With this wine we'd like you to just enjoy it with us. It's a, it's a snapshot of, of what we're about this season. It's also about trying to bring people together and sit down and actually enjoy some wine, maybe, you know, and some sun on the patio here. And I would recommend it to drink it even slightly chilled. Slightly chilled, definitely. Yeah. It really reflects again the aromatics of the wine. Yeah. So we're going to open now the Late Harvest Merlot, which is, again is a 2012, but only just 2012. It was picked just before Christmas time, mm -hmm. and it was picked in a style of late harvest rather than ice wine, because we really want to preserve the acidity of the wine. Again, uh, so it can go quite nicely with foods, a little bit more like dried figs and apricots, um, that sort of thing. So at Christmas time you can sit down maybe after your big meal and just enjoy some of the nuts and dried fruits of the season. So I'll just get Oleg to open it here. So the Moraine Late Harvest is 100% Merlot, which was grown in our vineyard site here as well, at the back here. And I'll just pour it here for, for Oleg. Mm. It's hugely vibrant in fruit. That's really what this late harvest is about. It's about fruit and acid and sugar, just to balance all those things out and so you can really enjoy it as a dessert wine or a wine that you can again put with quite some quite strong cheeses or dried fruits at the end of a meal. Yeah, it's layers of aromas coming from this wine. And what I like about what this wine is uh, it's not overly sweet. It's uh, very balanced with acidity and uh, for me personally, ice wine is, is too sweet, but I can drink this wine after meal and I will enjoy it. Again, we've got it in a nice small bottle here, so then you can really enjoy the wine. It's, it's not really a wine that you hold for too long, but you could probably age this for about three to four years. So once it's opened, we've got it in a small size bottle so you can enjoy it for, for the evening. And then nice with chocolate as well, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Dark, dark, uh, some dark chocolate, even yeah. with some chocolate with coffee. Yeah. some dark coffee. Mm -hmm. It picks up all of those mm -hmm. uh, aromas of chocolate and coffee because it's a red style grape. It's actually got the weight, it can hold, hold the stronger flavours like again blue cheese, anything that's dried fruit and chocolates and definitely coffee. And it's uh, full of aromas of plums and uh, raisins. Ra a lot of raisins like. coming in yeah. too. Well I'll just hand you back now to Oleg so you can talk about where you can buy these wines because that's pretty important. Yeah. 
So our wines is, uh, are available in uh, many BC VQA stores or uh, other stores uh, through, through British Columbia and Alberta. So you can check, uh, you can check availability on our website uh, morainewinery.com and also in our tasting room or you can even buy it online. So to find us here at Moraine, we're just a quick drive from Penticton, about five to seven minutes on the narrow matter bench road and you'll come see our signs, they'll be on the road and we've got a lovely little tasting room which you can actually enjoy having a little picnic afterwards as well with your wine. So please come in, we'd love to see you because we love talking about what we do here.